74th episode of Cloud Focus Weekly for the holiday week of December 2011. This episode is titled Ripple Time. Cloud Focus Weekly is sponsored by Arcus, Cloud Computing Experts. I'm your host, Jason Atwood, and joining me, and the little quick clackety dog walking around in the background. <laughs> I'm just laughing because there's a dog walking Whatever. around in our studio. Yeah, well. What's let, he doing in our let, studio? Who let the dogs in? You did. Justin, how you doing? Oh, you did. I'm great. I did bring my dog to the studio. It's holiday season. It's awesome. Yes, and someone doesn't have uh, lots of rugs and carpets in their in their studio. There's one rug in their in studio. The studio, and the dog happens to not be walking on That's it. That's true. So if you hear the clickety clacks, that is not the keyboard. That is the dog. That is the dog. Um, Hopefully, he doesn't go potty in the apartment. No, he will not. Um, he is well trained. So we have a big agenda today. Although we just chopped it down a bit. Yeah, we did. Uh, we've been tracking our agenda in Google Docs. <laughs> and uh, it, actually, interesting, I now I actually go in more and track it during the week and then, you know, sort of update it. But so we're going to talk about Facebook and Timeline, Salesforce and Ripple, and then uh, Evernote being getting little accolades. And then we will uh, make our cloud folks that pick of the weeks. What do you say? Uh, sounds good to me. Let's start with facebook launching timeline we missed this by about an hour yeah we did last week last week immediately after we recorded the podcast and published it there were announcements all over the internet about facebook officially putting timeline out there for everybody that's right and so tell me so they made the announcement of what time it was i think back in like whatever their big conference is um tell me what facebook timeline is well, I turned it on so I can tell you because I'm looking at mine right now. Um, and before I tell you what it is, I'll tell you I, I like it. Okay. Um, the quick opinion on it. So it essentially takes all your interactions on Facebook, pictures, status updates, likes, comments, whatever it might be, friends, and throws it into this timeline view. <laughs> hey, it's called Timeline. Yep. Uh, it's got a area on the top right that allows you to go back chronologically and starts with now and then it you know goes last month and then this year and then the previous year and the year before that um, mine goes it, it's actually pretty cool the way it picked things up like you know it has 2006 joined Facebook wait what when did you join Facebook? November 5th 2006 April 18th beat you again i think i i didn't have like a dot edu or something i, I like went that. back to my college and i got them to give me a like an alumni one yeah so i have like 2006 then it's 80s so i have like the year my sister was born and then this year my other sister was born oh interesting and those are the only two items in the 80s for me and then when i was born previous to that um so it was cool the way it it picked up like my sisters and when they were born right i'm interested i wonder i guess i guess my mom doesn't put um her her birth year on facebook because oh, okay. doesn't want people to know because right. i imagine it would then extend my timeline i would think back to when my mother was born perhaps uh but i think it's pretty cool like you know i'm looking at november right now and and it gives a really nice high level overview of um you know what went down in the month of november and and i imagine that this is gonna get um really cool for people who are the age of about 10 to 12 right now yep because they're just joining facebook so the whole thing will be full like we're missing obviously huge chunks of our life right, right. in our facebook timeline but it does do exactly what they sort of said that they were looking to do, which is um, create more of like a, a time life span over the course of Facebook and allow you to see it in that way. It, and I really like it. it. I think it's great. It is It is actually a great, great service. Uh, again, it does give you sort of a view. It's just a different view of your profile, but done in the timeline view. But really smartly, like, you know, it brings in the pictures. It uh, The one thing it does for me is it makes me want to use Facebook more as sort of putting up stuff. Because I started to look at the last, like, six months, and I noticed that they're all just me posting 
news stories, blog posts, and, and cloud focus weekly. And like, I'm not, I'm not using as actively as a, you know, I go back and I see more pictures and stuff. So definitely it is great. I will say it is a pretty much a big rip off of Genie. And for those of you who didn't know Genie, I made Genie one of my picks a long back. It's G I G E N I. And it's, it's, I used to say Genie was like Facebook, but only for your relatives. And you connect people up as your relatives and it creates the, you know, your, your family tree and you can go back and history and then you can connect in other people of the same family tree. It's, it's really well done. And it too had a timeline. You can go back over your life and all the pictures and when they were taken. And this is done better in some ways, but like Genie is done in a really cool way. If you haven't tried Genie, you should try it and see if you have relatives on it and connect up. It's it's sort of like Facebook for, for relatives. But anyway, yeah, I mean, it's very cool. Is it groundbreaking? Ah. No, ah. it's just a new UI on Facebook. Yeah. I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at pictures from Dreamforce last year, December 2000. Like, I just went back a full year. Yep. Uh, got the Dreamforce stuff going on. Um, got the dog licking my arm. <laughs> I got a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, no, I think it's pretty cool. It's a good enhancement. You didn't. So works I noticed, on the mobile. I noticed you didn't I did add not. in a. Uh, I did not add picture. a cover. I had to go find a cover because I didn't have any good pictures, and I found one of a picture I took um, from outside my apartment, um, which is uh, the thing is, it's a beautiful skyline of, of New York City and sort of like the river. The, the, the scary part of that picture is that was two days after 9-11 and I was actually oh. taking a full panoramic and I called it I think and I tagged it as like the new skyline of New York and I obviously cut out that part but anyway uh, alright to bring us in a different direction uh, second one is kind of interesting something that we not only uh, have played with a little bit but then actually mentioned to a client today so which is Salesforce buys Ripple 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 that is the way to pronounce it right R-Y-P-P-L-E Sounds Ripple? good to me. Ripple? Seems like it's going to be relaunched as Success Force. Yes, it is. So for those of you who haven't paid attention, this was announced, I think, last week, um, or maybe even this week. Uh, and basically, R- Ripple is a, looks like a startup, um, let's call it a... Well, I, I like to think of it as just another, um, like, many, many moon, like a Google Apps app engine type of application that salesforce purchased to add to their collection and this is i would say human capital management yeah. perhaps sort of it's not really cap i mean it's it's really about human promotion and like and and goals and goal tracking and performance although not really like traditional performance reviews but sort of with a new sort of social edge to it with achievements and 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 icons and liking and thanks and uh you know it's still open so i think when they bought one of these companies they closed it down you couldn't go into it but this one's still open so you can still go in sign up for a free account sign in with your google apps account which is very nice you can try it out um it is uh you know i think really interesting but basically what for salesforce it is you know them getting into and the and the article on uh yahoo finance is you know, basically saying that they're competing with Oracle bought a big uh, human resource or human capital management software, uh, and now the Salesforce is sort of countered with theirs. I wouldn't um, call this big. Yeah, I, I mean, the thing, I had never heard of it. The thing that well, I had never heard of that doesn't mean there's millions of these companies out there. Remember when we went through our list of places you can like articles? Those oh, 397. Yeah. We've only heard of like 10. That doesn't mean they're big. No, uh, <laughs> but I, I looked at it. I played with it. <clears throat> My, my gut reaction was it looks very similar to chatter and liking and all that. And the actual data that was tracking, I felt like you could build in, I don't know, maybe 10, 20 minutes with three different objects in Salesforce. It definitely has a different UI on it. Um, I'm not really sure what it gets them from a, it does, you know, from an architecture standpoint, I don't think it gets too much. From a name brand thing, I don't think it gets too much. There are a couple companies using it. Um, that maybe they get for the clients, or maybe they just get the people who have the sort of, you know, again, most of these acquisitions are about people. Maybe the people behind Ripple who understand this space can then can come on board Salesforce and, you, you know, you can buy 20 people at once as opposed to having to hire them individually. I feel like that's that's it. They, they have a product. They had a couple of name brands using it. I think Facebook, Facebook was one. Facebook, Zynga. 
That's so, it. <laughs> well, those are two pretty, you know, good name no. brands that are using your product. That's pretty yeah, good. It's not, you know, Deutsche Bank or no, you but know. it's what would attract Salesforce to say, oh, that's is these are the types of companies that we think are being very successful well, also, and would use our products well. To current customers too. Sure. Of Salesforce. Yeah, so, they probably said, hey, this is great. We use this. We don't want to build hr on salesforce because we use this thing and they're like all right well you're gonna do hr on salesforce because we're gonna buy that we're gonna buy that and it'll be on salesforce Salesforce. but i really feel like if if you're like if it's in your tagline or in your if it's in your um if you're an application and if it's in your dna to be open mobile social salesforce might buy you (laughs) because if you just say you're open and mobile and social from the core and your cloud, they will buy you. I just bought com- comms. Yeah. Cloud open mobile social dot com. Yeah. It's my new comms dot com. Comms dot com. Is that let's see. Yeah, it's taken. Really? I can tell you right now it's taken. Oh, uh, I'm gonna try it. Take yeah, it. it is. It's a cloud based telephony solution. There you well, go. Well they're gonna be purchased. They're gonna soon. be purchased because they're <laughs> open, they're mobile, they're cloud, and they're social. Yep. Um so yeah, I, interesting. I mean, any other thoughts on it? I, I haven't used it enough to have an opinion one way or the other. And I mean, I, I logged in, I looked at it. It didn't grip me to the point of needing to really, really geek out on it and right. try it and really get to know it. So from that perspective, you know, that says some that says a little well, something. It's about, but it's about something that you. It's, it's not, not something, something you can I play need. with. Yeah, right. I can't really play with it. I don't gonna, need it. I I can't. I'm gonna fake hire myself. People. Yeah, or. I mean, I guess I could set up a bunch of goals for myself and see if I could achieve them, but, like, it's supposed to be collaborative and social, so that's not really that fun, I guess. You could see how it fits perfectly into their model. You could see them turning this into something for Dreamforce. Success Force. Yeah, Success Force. There we go. There it is. Um, Prediction of when you think you'll see it. In a, in, as a package product. We've already seen it. No, no, no. Package product available via license. Is it free now? No, well, it's free now, yeah. Then I don't think you're going to see it pay. I think it's going to be like do. Mm, do? I don't think so. I well, think it'll be packaged into Salesforce. It'll be something, it'll be a add-on into Salesforce. I could see it just being what it is. HR cloud. Human cloud. Yeah. The human cloud. The human cloud? Human cloud. It's not even human. It's the cloud. <laughs> I, I think they'd go that direction. I don't, because it's a whole new space. But it's free. No, so it's t- free to start with ten, four people and to not oh. do anything. All right. Yeah, you have to pay to go up. It's, right. it's freemium. Well, what'll be interesting is to see if they redo the technology because it's very chatter-like. Right. But it's not chatter. No, but it doesn't seem like they couldn't rebuild that pretty quickly. Well, that's what I mean. I just wonder if they're just they're just gonna gut that thing and redo it that's what I'm, that's what i, I like saying. we like that idea yeah we, we can read uh, yeah that. the idea the people will put on our engine Next which will Dreamforce. run better and faster and and for and we can scale to millions i feel like it could already do that if it's on google i mean that's a google app it's yeah. already like sitting in a pretty scalable spot right there yeah all the security stuff that salesforce has that google doesn't We'll see. All Next, right. Dreamforce. Dreamforce. We'll see something yeah. All right. big about I it. I say announce the Dreamforce spring 13. All right. All right. Uh, and then the last little piece of news, which was actually contributed by uh, someone else, okay. um, <laughs> which falls right in line with our last picks. I think last week or two weeks ago, we, we made a lot of Evernote picks. We did. Well, Evernote's named the company of the year. By who? By Inc. Magazine, which is not, that's not a small thing. Not too shabby. That's not too shabby. Yeah, so they're, um, they're, <laughs> I love the tagline, say hello to your new brain, um, or the, the title of this article, yep. it's pretty, pretty cool, and, uh, and the little blurb is, the company of the year is rejecting industry trends, getting customers to pay for something that's free, and reinventing the way we remember. Mm. Um, I know you and I both use Evernote pretty regularly i think i, I throw a right. lot of stuff into evernote you did not introduce me to evernote my oh, yeah. iphone introduced me to evernote no 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 sir. no no my friend because as soon as the iphone had apps evernote was the first thing everybody installed so don't even try it i joined facebook before you i use whatever evernote you before you um i'll find the email where i sent you a link to evernote i i'm telling you <laughs> you opened everyone who had the iphone was Ooh, app.
apps, and yes, then you open the app the store, ones. and it was the one you installed. No, I know, but it before it was an app, it was something on. It was. I would on like you to desktop. show me an email that you sent me before an iPhone app to use Evernote. I guarantee you that's not true. Really? I will bet you. I will bet you, and we how will much? give the listeners how much, however much you want. One I want year. a pre iOS email from you mm-hmm. that said use this product called Evernote because it's awesome that dates back to before the iPhone app existed because you know that doesn't exist I think it does guaranteed it doesn't I think it does fine you find it and I will give you a million dollars million dollars a million dollars here's the and problem free dog. you know where that email probably is where is it the only reason I will not oh I, yeah you don't have that email that email I might doesn't have done even it. exist, though. I, yeah, I might have done it on our corporate network. That email doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't. Anyway, okay. regardless <laughs> of that, I will this bet is, you a dog. This is um, a, I will get a dog to bark on this podcast <laughs> right now if you don't stop it. Evernote's turned into quite the company. Aside from their core product, Evernote, which is the fantastic multi-cross-platform note-taking um, sh- application sharing, sharing OCR-ing. public OCR that was like the coolest thing it was like let me take a picture of anything and it'll and I can search for the text like let right. me take a picture of my whiteboarding session and I can look for that yep. I take a picture on my iPhone of this whiteboard session and boom it's on my computer yep. or on the web and I can get to it from anywhere uh, really great stuff really cool um, but then they've gone in a bunch of different directions with either purchasing or putting out new applications they bought they bought an uh, app they bought skitch yep, which is a desktop app which i think was a, a pick of the week a bunch of months back yep um we talked about their food app um we talked about the peak, the peak oh, app yep. on the on the I, ipad yep and you know it's funny my my father has forever been um uh, a pc user and i'm sorry well, he he was also a BlackBerry user. I'm sorry. And over the last year and a half, he moved to a Mac and an iPhone. And he asked me, you know, he said, "I have hundreds of notes in Outlook. Like, what what do I do with these? Like, and I want them on my mobile device, right? But they're on Outlook, and 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 he's moving to the Mac, and he still uses Outlook on his Mac. He doesn't use Mail. He loves Outlook." Right, but I told him use, use Evernote, Evernote for right. notes. You get the app, you get the app on your phone, you get the website when you're somewhere you know where you don't have your phone on you or need it on the web. And he freaking loved it, and it was really easy. He said to get them in to Evernote. Um, I just thought of an, I just thought of a way to prove that I've actually have Evernote for that long. But okay, keep going. You're gonna see her join since. That's correct. All right. Um, Anyway, I just think it's a great product and good for them for getting uh, Company of the Year. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I... When you figure out how to figure out when you joined, I'm going to look and see when I joined. Okay. So I'm sure it was after you, but... Oh, definitely after But I, I know it was part of the iPhone is when I joined. Um, yeah, I, I really love it, and it has become my second. I was a big note taker way back with Trios. I used to use the Trio notes, and... I used to have an apps on my Mac that would keep the notes from Trio and sync them and all sorts of stuff. Um, obviously, with Trio dying, Evernote became like the replacement. I actually learned about Evernote from Merlin Mann, we've talked about a couple times, who is, mm-hmm. I don't know, where's his book? Talk about, talk about something that's like been a long time He's coming. a big idea guy and not yeah. a big finisher. Not a follow through. Anyway, um, he For talked a lot about- productivity guy. He's not very productive. He's might, very productive at being productive. It, it might be it might be out for all we know, but That's true. Uh, I haven't seen it. Um, Let's see. I will search for that. What uh, Merlin Mans? It's called yes. Inbox Zero, right? Yes. I think that was what it's called. Oh, let's see. Inbox Zero at Amazon. Um, February twenty first, two thousand twelve. There you have it. February first, two thousand twelve. Oh, it's coming. Yeah. So, it's but I coming. thought it was like last spring too. Well, maybe. all right. I joined July twelfth, two thousand eight, and never. So let me. Um, we're gonna have a little competition. Yes. Um, right. If you're live in there. Anyway, the what I was gonna say is, I, I never go to it on the web on that. I use browser. it. Not only do I use it, I actually use it. Um, one of the things I do do, uh, I I put it into my like weekly flow. Like my we talk about GTD and 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 uh, weekly review. It's in. It's as part of my system. I go through my Evernotes and at least look at the last like couple hundred. Um, 
it's right up there. It's a web version. Uh, Evernote web. Uh, so a great app. I don't c- company of the year that I don't get. Yeah, it's a little. I mean, there's been a ton of companies. I I mean, it's inks, right? So Settings. so it's like tech driven. Yeah. Where do I look for this? Right there. Where? Remember since. Remember Join date since. July something. July twelfth, two thousand eight. Oh, it's the same day. It's yeah, because it came out on the phone and we joined. No, it's not it. That's not it. I, I, I know that's not it. I think that's like when they something. Um, anyway. Okay. All right. Sounds like when it came out on the phone because when did iPhones come out? What month did iPhones come out? July. Oh, right. It wasn't 8. It was before that. That was the end of... End of 2008. Two. That was probably the second Remember, iPhone. Remember, iPhones came out the before second iPhone. I, iPad. That's right. iPad. iPods. The second iPhone. All right. Let's keep going. I win. Um, I w- mark that down. Millions of dollars. I, I, I love it. If you don't use it, it's free. The, the, I, the only thing I cannot figure out about Evernote, two things I do not like about Evernote. One is they cannot convince me, and I spend lots of money on software, tons. Tons, you know this. I spend tons of money yes. on software. and I will You will gladly pay $5. For anything. But I, they cannot convince me, through whatever mix they've ever done, to buy it. Now, I consider myself... Not cheap. a pow- oh. cheap, but not a power user of Evernote. Yeah. But I'm definitely a user. Like I use Evernote. Like if I don't use it, I use it every other day. Like every other yeah, day. Yeah, I Evernote. use it yeah. often. I have things in there that are in there for a reason. They're notes. Right. right? I'm using zero percent of my monthly allowance. Yeah, that's up down. How many? How many? I have 400 web clips, 610 phones. Same thing phones. as you. That's our notes remaining. Oh, it's remaining. That's like, I have, I have no, like, there would be no reason for me to pay for this. One gigabyte monthly upload allowance, I get 60 meg and I'm at zero. Right. Like, I, I, maybe I didn't add a note this month, but, like, I, I just don't think <laughs> I would ever need to pay for this service. And I think that's sort of a problem. Is that's my that's my first problem with Evernote is they ha- they cannot figure out a way to make me pay. And I know that's, well, that's sort of not really a problem. Well, it is a problem because problem for them, how not do they for make you. Money? Well, there you go. Well, I just make read money. to you they're they're getting their customers to pay for something that's free and reinventing. Stuff. But that doesn't mean anything because I'm one of those guys and I should be paying and I would be yeah, paying. But I'm not. maybe maybe someone. Like, here's an example: I pay for Genie. I paid for Genie. That's crazy. Yeah, I got the pre, the pro version because I had enough things in it that I wanted. Anyway, that's the one. And the other one is exportability. So I thought about, and we talked about PDFs, and I keep all my PDFs. I thought about at one point just dumping every PDF I have into Evernote and, and going pre and going pay. I was thinking, okay, I'll just dump everything I can. It'll index everything. It'll be searchable. It'll be great, taggable. But when I went to say, okay, but what happens if Evernote decides to go away or get bought by some company or whatever? How do I get the documents out? And I did the research and I looked around and the problem was the way to get things out is not easy. They're all stored in these individual little folders. Like I couldn't just grab them and like copy them somewhere. So like that, those are the two things that keep me from, from going full on pay with, the, um, with Evernote. All right. Well, I think we just made sort of a cloud focus pick of the week but let's make uh two more all right and why don't you give me your cloud focus app pick of the week all right so mine is an app that i downloaded a while back and could never use until recently Hmm. um so i'm picking it now i'll be interested to hear why you can use it now so yes you will actually uh so my pick is is called will i be able to use it now do you have hbo no then no no okay um my pick is HBO Go yeah. for iOS, mm-hmm. so for both the iPhone and the iPad. Heard of it. Universal app. Uh, HBO Go is if you have, if you're an HBO subscriber. Mm-hmm. 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 So that's the first if. The second if is what was preventing me from using it in the past. And if your cable company is one of the providers that is supported... I think it w- before it wasn't, but no, I think it changed. is now. It's ah. in beta, but ah. it works. Okay, I've, that's the problem. It works. Yep. Um, uh, I have RCN. Full disclosure. Um, you can log in to this HBO Go app and watch an enormous library of content from HBO for free. The app is free, and 
really you know you're paying for hbo subscription already so you know you and you could do this on the web as well i'm just picking it for the ipad and the and right. the iphone um and you can go through every series nice. of hbo seasons meaning like you know you can go into deadwood and you know we love deadwood and watch every single episode of deadwood ever nice on your ipad at any time can you streaming push it to a, your apple tv i haven't tried okay I, I i'm imagining i could but okay you know we can we can test that later that actually might get I me back on back a, on HBO. i mean look i'm i'm i subscribe to hbo anyway this is like gravy like if i'm if i'm somewhere else if i'm traveling if i'm wherever i've got this enormous library of not only every series and every episode of every series that hbo's ever done but you also have movies, right? So, like, all the movies that are on their, like, on-demand service are available. All their comedy specials, their sports specials, their documentaries. And believe it or not, even their late-night stuff is on there. Really? So, yeah, you can set up, like, child stuff when you set oh, up the application. Yes. Um, but I'm looking at um, something, you should not something mention. I shouldn't mention on this podcast. No. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a really cool application, really cool service, and my cable company finally started supporting it, so I was able to pick it because uh, I was going to pick it a while ago, but I couldn't actually use it, so that nice. wouldn't really and make you're, a whole you're lot actually of sense. Using it I like have it. used it, and it works very well. Excellent. I mean, I haven't like because I haven't gone anywhere. I'm sitting in front of a 46 inch HD TV. Like right. I'm not going to sit in my apartment and watch some hbo show on you know on my laptop right uh have hbo but on demand do you have to be in he do you have to be at home to watch it on no, the rcn network just log in logged in okay that's good yeah cool uh hbo go free plus a hundred dollars a month plus what's the hundred dollars a month? cable <laughs> oh well yeah <laughs> well you're gonna pay that anyway it's the well, hbo that, that, it's the hbo cost it's a joke it's cost money um, all right. Well, my pick. I actually had two picks, um, but my first pick is going to go to my second pick. Um, but I'm not going to pick the first pick. I'm going to leave it for another week. Well, I found fa- I, I found a new piece of software. I started to use it, and I was like, and then I found this, and I thought, well, I'll make this the pick this week, and I'll need, leave that next one for next week. Um. So you actually mentioned that you picked Skitch for the Mac. I did. Uh, which was very funny. I think we've actually had one of our fans come up and talk to us about that podcast because I, I led you into like talking about it and p- how much you paid for yes, it. Yes, you and trapped they, me. And then they announced that they had put it free like that day. Yeah. Um, and so when I saw this, it came out. I thought, well, I'll pick this, especially with Evernote uh, of the company of the year. Um, Skitch for the iOS. So the same love and feeling you have for Skitch is now in uh, on iOS. So Skitch is a sort of a screenshot, an easy screenshot plus um, ability to um, uh, to like manipulate files on the Mac. You can then send it to places. You can do some of the same things on uh, on the iOS. It's free on the iOS. So if you like Skitch on the Mac, use it on the iOS, iPad, i uh, iPhone. Um, Use it for free. So, Skitch. Uh, we didn't talk about the blog post this week. Wow, we didn't. Yeah, and it was not? my blog post. It was yours. Oh, you that know was what? a good one to talk about. We should talk about that one next week. Next week, because it'll be right before New Year's Eve. Right. So, I actually wrote a blog post called uh, The Cloud Producing Predictions of 2012. So, maybe we'll just all do predictions. Yeah, all we'll just do predictions. So, all next week. Prediction show. 75. Number 75. All right. it's yeah, a good one. If you, if you want a preview, go to blog.arcasync.com. You can read my predictions for 2012. Uh, follow us at Arcasync, um, at, or at Jason M. Atwood, or at Just Edelstein. Go to facebook.com slash Arcasync. Subscribe on iTunes, comment on the blog post, and or the podcast. You can do that. We're getting more and more people doing that using Discuss, which is really cool. And uh, we will see you next week. And until then, and as always, well, enjoy those cloudy days.